channel. So in this video, we will see how to connect to Iceland cluster using REST API with the help of Python request library. So in the previous week, I have made a video on uh, NetApp and I have shown how to connect to NetApp REST API using request library. So by seeing that video, few of my subscribers ask that make a similar video on Iceland. So here we are. So let's uh, start the video. Here we will see how we can connect uh, to NetApp REST API in GUI and how we can do that programmatically using Python request library. So first of all, this is the Iceland cluster. You have to log into the Iceland cluster with the username and a password that you have. So let me just log in first. And in order to access the API page or to see all the endpoints that is available for Iceland cluster, you can just uh, type here platform and hit enter. It will ask you username and password. Give the same username and password that you have given to log into the GUI. And now you will be able to see all the endpoints that is available here. So in this video, we will do a very simple call. So basically, let's uh, see what is the simple endpoints that it has. Now cluster owner is there, event lists are there. So basically, it should be the cluster nodes. I believe this will be the simplest one. So now if you want to see the exact output in the GUI here, you will have to copy the endpoints here like uh, I am doing the copy here and then you will have to paste it uh, here and hit enter and you will be able to see the output. So this output is basically in JSON format. You will have to retrieve the exact uh, value that you want to do. So for example, if you will look at first value is the node and this particular Iceland cluster is a simulator. So I have only one nodes and within that nodes, you can see the drive and drive here, the bay number, dev name, firmware, current firmware, desired firmware, all the details are there. So let's try to access this information in programmatic way using Python. So let me just copy the endpoint here. I'll go to Visual Studio Code. And here I have created a file with .py extension because we are writing it in Python programming language. Now, first thing first, we'll have to import the library that is a request. And this is the library which makes API calls to the cluster. Now let's create a simple function. I will name it as connect isolate and give a bracket colon hit enter. Now there is a spelling mistake. Let me just correct it. And the first thing first, we'll have to define the URL. So URL is nothing but the API endpoints that we have. Now second variable we'll have to create that is a header and headers will basically helps us to pass the credential to the Iceland cluster. So it's basically in the dictionary format. So within curly braces we'll have to give a value and the value sorry the key is uh, authorization and uh, the value of that authorization key would be the credential. So we'll have to type basic and then the username, then colon and then password. So make sure the format is exactly like this username, colon and then the password. But the catch here is that you cannot write it in a plain text. You'll have to first encode it in base 64 format and the encoded version here you'll have to type it here. So let me just copy this and go to a website called uh, techieblogging.com. So I will give the link of this particular website. You just have to go here, come little bit down and under base 64 encode, paste the username and password and click on encode. Now this is the encoded version. You have to copy this and paste it here. So our header section is uh, ready. Now let's do a get call. So I'm creating a variable called data. Then I am calling a get request so that I can do request dot get and uh, we'll have to pass arguments. The first argument would be URL. So URL is nothing but this endpoint. The second argument is verify equals to false. This will basically ignore the HTTP validation and the third arguments will be header and that value will be the header that we already have created. Now let's just uh, print it to see if so far whatever we have written is working or not. So we'll have to call this function. Let me just type uh, the function name and give bracket and run this to see if it is working or not. So response is 200. It means it is working. Now 
we'll see the JSON format of this particular out. Now let me just create another variable and uh, name it as data underscore JSON. And here I have to use the data dot JSON function here. So this JSON function is basically inbuilt in request library. So you don't have to import it separately. Now all the data is in the JSON format. Now if you want to print it, let me just uh, print it data underscore JSON. So let's uh, run it again and uh, you are seeing the output here which is in the JSON form. Now if you want to access anything from this, you will have to make a uh, few more calls. So let's uh, try to call some uh, values here. So this is a dictionary format. So dictionary format always uh, they are in key and value pairs. You can see first value is error. So not no error is there. That's why it is an empty list. Now the node is there. Now under the nodes we have drive. So let's try to uh, fetch the information that is uh, bay number. So you, similar with the similar fashion you will be able to fetch many other information also but let's just concent concentrate on this uh, bay number. What I will do here I will first get the value of this key nodes. So I will make a variable called uh, node list and then I will use the data underscore JSON variable to get the value. So what I have to do is that I have to dot and I would have to use a get function. So this will basically retrieve the value with the key. So we have to provide the key name here that is nodes here. Now node list is basically node underscore list is basically all these information that is present inside this. So first is the drive. Now what I will do here, I will do a for loop here. Now for i in node list, I will print i dot uh, get the drive. Now it will give me the value of uh, all the drives present in the node one or the, the nodes here. So basically now which is again a list here and uh, we need the value of b now. So let's try to print it and see what result it's giving. So basically it's a complex uh, JSON format. So we'll have to type print most of the times and see what information it is giving. So it has given none. So I guess I have given the spelling wrong here. So let me just give it i dot get drives. Now let's run it again and uh, it has given me again a list with all the details of the drive. So now I guess yes, it's under only BNM only. So I'll have to do another for loop to get the B number here. So what I will do here, I will remove this print statement and uh, I will do for J in I dot get drive, then print J dot J dot get and the key name would be bay number. So what it's supposed to give is that it should give all the bay number here. So let me just uh, run it again. See if it is giving the requested output. Yes, it has given all the bay number here. It's starting from 8 and it has uh, ended with uh, 1. Now if you want to access any other value as well, you can do that. You can use a similar method. So I know this is a little bit complex for a beginner to get into the JSON format and retrieve the value in the JSON format, but just practice it and you will be able to write any complex script using REST API. So that's all for this video. Subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notification to get my future videos.